Hello, beautiful creatives. I have come upstairs to do some videoing for you and I realized that my desk is actually unusable for videoing at this point. I left it in such a state of disarray. I was up here late last night doing some color mixing with the golden, making up some mixes in my little pots. An idea that I got from that new account that I'm following on Instagram, um, yeah, I gotta clean my desk off. There's some major cleaning up that needs to be done. I think it may be an addiction. I think I need a sketchbook anonymous meeting because I have a whole lot of sketchbooks. And because I started following someone new on Instagram, who uses a different kind of sketchbook than I do. I fell into that trap that so many of us fall into is, oh, I want that kind of sketchbook. So I came up into my studio and made myself take a look at the sketchbooks that I have and how many were empty, how many were filled, and how many were completed. And the results were a little shocking. Okay, so I have separated my sketchbooks into piles to take a look at what I actually have, um, what I have used, what I haven't even cracked, in an effort to get myself to use up some of my partial sketchbooks before I spend any money on new sketchbooks because money's tight even though there's a sketchbook that I want it's a sketchbook that I was introduced to by a new Instagram person that I'm following and I absolutely love the sketchbook and I was I came very close to purchasing one but you know Dawn's not working that much anymore money is tight uh yeah so I don't need to be spending more money on a sketchbook when I have a lot of space in some of these sketchbooks so let's see what we have these are sketchbooks that are full. So this is the pile that has been filled. That's that stack. These are watercolor sketchbooks that have been partially filled. This is an etcher. Um, this is These two bottom ones are etchers. There's actually, oh yeah, this is an etcher, but it's full. So there's the biggest etcher, the medium sized one. This is a Koval. I think they call it the perfect sketchbook Koval. And this is a Koval. And this is that new one that I got. I think probably all of these sketchbooks that I'm going to show you are linked in my um, links below the video. So you'll be able to find them there on my favorite art links. Um, so anyways, these are watercolor ones that are, are very lightly filled. There's still plenty of room in these to go. So I don't need to be buying any watercolor sketchbooks because I have a nice variety of sizes. Again, that's the pile of ones that I filled. This is a pile of toned paper, different toned paper ones. There's all different colors in this one. This is a um, Stillman and Burn, and it has like maybe one drawing in it, maybe one or two, you know, pastel uh, pencil drawing. I don't even think there's anything else in here. These two, these three Strathmore, one is the toned tan, one is the toned blue and toned gray. 
I have barely used those, only done a couple of pieces. I actually sold them, so there's nothing in those. These, um, I don't think of these really as sketchbooks. I think of them as more just paper to do paintings on. But so there's that pile. This pile is um, sketchbooks that have not even been cracked. I mean, th these two little ones I got at Jackson's sort of samples of Stonehenge. But this one, the reflections. This is the this is the sketchbook that I did um, over the summer. If you remember my magic journal, my magic art heals journal, I did a I did gratitude journaling and painting each day. So I would do a, a painting and then do my, let's see, I'm grateful for, and then a little bit of um, journaling on each page. And I did that every day throughout the summer. I'll try to remember to put a, a link to the flip through I did of this. I think I did a flip through of this, but there's a lot of videos showing process of me doing, working on this. So um, that you would be able to find in my journals playlist. So that's what they look like full. So they're great little journals. This is the, this, this is the different binding, but here it is with that binding. That's the same journal as that. So great little journal, haven't cracked that. You know what I really should do is I really should start doing the gratitude journaling again. Let's see, so that's those two not used yet. These, more of the colored paper, black and craft. I love these Soho brick journals because they lay completely flat. I actually use one of these with this little Peshad box when I take it out because that's the those are both a la prima Peshad boxes. This is the Yellowstone and this is the Belly River, I think it's called. But they these little square books, these little square books work perfectly with the the uh, holder, the canvas holder on those and it because the covers are hard. So I have a white one of these in there that I use for plein air painting. This is another Stillman and Burn, not even cracked because I have one in process in this pile. And then this is another one of those Soho's just to show you how perfectly flat these lay. These are, I love these journals. These lay absolutely perfectly flat. They have high quality paper. And I'll link these I'll either link these below my video or I'll make sure that they're in my favorite items link, my Amazon link or my Blink, Blick link below. But I love those, love those Soho's. They're not even cracked. A Stillman and Burn with great paper. Which, which kind of Stillman and Burn is this? This is the, this is the Zeta series. So that's not even cracked. These barely have had any use. These aren't even cracked, and I really should get myself to start a gratitude journal again. So these are all the partial ones. These are all the sketchbooks that I have partially filled. And I'll pull these over to my desk and give you a look at some of these. But um, yeah, there's a lot here that to work with. So I'll, and I paralyze myself. I start using a journal in a certain way and then I don't, um, I don't use it, you know? I start with like a pretty painting and I just don't, then I think I can only do pretty paintings in them. So I don't use them expressively. So I will show you what's in some of these and further convince myself why I need to get back to using some of these and loosen up my rigidness as to how each journal needs to be used. Okay, so here they are neatly organized so that I, it's easier for me to keep track of what's here. So here are all the ones that are partially filled and here are my watercolor ones that are partially filled. These are ones that are empty. I, have, I don't have anything in these, this pile yet. And these, those, and some down here are ones that are full. These have all been filled. And these two are filled. I need to do, I filled these like a month or two ago. I finished those, so I need to do a flip through on those. And those are partially filled ones in my swatch book. 
This is what I call the emotional journal, emotion journal, the expressive arts journal, and my largest moleskin that there just isn't room for on the shelf. So when I look now, it's going to be really easy to figure out, you know, take from that pile and finish those up and that pile for watercolor and then the ones that I haven't even used. So that was actually a really good task to get done to get everything organized. Oh, and this box is actually not a pair of shoes, but it's a few things that I have coming up that companies have sent me that I am ex really excited to play with and really excited to show you, but I'm not allowed to show them to you until um, some things I'm not allowed to show until February and some things I'm not allowed to show until March because they are new and coming out and the trade shows are going on now in Europe and in uh, the United States. So the timing has to be right for the companies, but this is fun. This is gonna be fun, some stuff to show you that I've been sent and I haven't even played with yet. I'm waiting to open them until I am able to video them for you. So that's gonna be exciting. Now I need to clean off my desk so I can show you some sketchbooks. Okay, so I know I'm way overdue for doing flip throughs on this pile of sketchbooks that I promised you a million years ago. Some of these have already been flipped through and um, but they were in videos, much longer videos that had a lot of other content in them. Some of them may not have been. I've gotten mixed up. I don't know. This is that reflections journal. This is what they look like full. Aren't they? Isn't that great? I love these little reflection journals. And I spent the whole summer last summer. I made a lot of videos of doing this gratitude journal um, where I wrote my gratitudes on one page and then did a painting on the other page. So anyways, um, yeah, I don't know which one of these, but I was going to do flip throughs of these to music where it's just music. Cause I know a lot of people prefer that. Haven't gotten to that. I need to do a video on that. I've just had so much other stuff that I've wanted to show you guys. These are two journals that I actually just finished. I literally just finished like, I don't know, within the last few weeks. Actually, is this one finished? Yeah, I guess this one is finished. So, oh, I need to do a flip through of those. I don't know why it takes me so long to get to doing flip through, but just to give you an idea of how you can paralyze yourself. Well, I already showed you this one, the paintings that I did in that. So because there's good paintings in this, I don't reach for it when I wanna do spontaneous stuff and I paralyze myself against using it. Um, this was a collage sketchbook. This started, I think, I think it was back in 2006. I didn't use to date my work back then, unfortunately, but it's a collage sketchbook. So, or mixed media, maybe I should say. So I paralyzed myself from using that because this was only going to be collage or mixed media. So I didn't go back to using that. Uh, this is the one that I just bought. And I'm actually really enjoying this. This is um, linked in my Amazon favorites list, which is down below the video. And I've put a direct link to it in my last few videos. I can actually do that again in this video. But um, yeah, this one I actually just got and I'm putting it to good use. But still, you know, it's, it's one with a lot of room left in it. This one I do use a lot. This is my Talon's Art Creation. I don't know if that shows. I love the color of this sort of a grapefruit color. And this I have used a lot. Um, this is probably too much to do a flip through now, but this has a huge, huge variety of things in it. All kind. This was those gel sticks. Those were so much fun. I should go back to using those. Anyways, I can't talk about all these because it will take up the whole video, but this is those gel sticks and um, luminance pencils and maybe some Neo color. Yeah, just, you know, I don't even know if I've done a partial flip through on this before with you guys, but it's a great, it's a great sketchbook and I have a lot of different types of 
stuff in here, different styles. I do like these sketchbooks. Um, I first learned about this when I was in Emma Carlyle's Patreon. And um, I do like this kind of sketchbook and I love the moleskins that are like this, but these tend to be less expensive than the moleskins. Uh, these are really inexpensive if you buy them um, from Jackson's and you uh, have enough stuff to make the shipping worthwhile to the US, which I think on my last couple of orders was only like $7. But you can get them from Blick and you can get them in more colors from Blick, which yeah, that must be where I got this from because this is the pink. So you can order these from Blick. I'll actually put a link to them. I have an affiliate account with uh, Blick, so it helps support my channel. But this one, actually this I did, I do, I use this in my art nest. That's really primarily where I use this sketchbook is in my art nest at night. If you didn't, if you don't know what my art nest is, I'll try to remember to put a link, um, to my one of my art nest videos I have a few but little sketch of Toshi sitting on a pillow on the couch just real that was uh, Tombow markers and colored pencils that little sketch anyways super quick flip through playing with figures just wonky donkey stuff this was gouache I actually really love this painting a lot um, those are the gel sticks, the tempera sticks, tempera sticks, but see how mixed up this one is. There's some good paintings. There's some playful paintings. There's some primitive paintings, you know, because I did it that way, I didn't, it was designated a play sketchbook right from the beginning. So it didn't, it didn't paralyze me from using it. And I tend to go through these art creation and moleskin sketchbooks pretty fast because I feel very free in them. So what that tells me is I'm going to have to mess up, <laughs> loosen up some of my um, fussy sketchbooks so I can get to use them. Either that or I'm gonna to have to start doing more perfected paintings, but I need to get more paintings on my website for sale. So I think if I'm gonna sit down and do, um, you know, more realism based, uh, paintings that I should do them outside of my sketchbook and do them on, um, you know, something that I can sell panel or paper that I can sell. This is this one. This is the moleskin that we just started on January 1st with the expressive paintings. I, I did a video of this for you guys. Um, I did do a video of this, but that was one of the videos I told you about last week. They got lost. This you will have seen by the time you see this video because I painted this on a video for you. So this one was just started. It's a mole skin. It's nice. You know, I like the mole skins. This one is almost done. Really need to focus on finishing this one. This is my expressive, my emotion journal. I think I've called it in other videos. And there really is just a few pages left. And some of you have asked for for a flip through of this numerous times. I've had some of you ask for a flip through of this and I really have to think about doing a full flip through on this because this is really personal stuff. Um, you know, these are things that I that I went through and, and, you know, this journal was pretty much designated to emotional stuff. I mean, there are occasional just little paintings in it, but for the most part, it's deeply emotional stuff. And there's some things that I think people might find triggering. So I wouldn't want to show all of it, but I may do a flip through of selected parts. Yeah, some of it might be triggering for people. So we'll see. I don't know. I'll have to think about if I want to do a full flip through on this one. Um, there is a word though uh, that I'd like to say because I... When I do flip throughs on my intuitive journals where I have come up with a design out of my head and it's completely unique to, to my emotional experience, I do ask that you don't copy it. I've had people tell me that they've copied things out of my emotional journals when I've shown them on the videos 
and that would stop me from showing them anymore because that's deeply personal stuff. I don't care, you know, if you imitate, it's better not to copy, but if you imitate like a landscape I do or a floral I do or a still life, but I really ask that you not imitate the, or not copy, directly copy my intuitive work or my, um, you know, my surrealistic imaginary work that's directly out of my brain. And then this one, I actually have a page here that I missed, but this was just some really crappy watercolors. I did not like doing watercolor on this paper. This is the Fabriano. I know some people love Fabriano paper and maybe it's just the sketchbook, but I just really didn't like how feathery watercolors came out on this. This was a page that I painted something over. I don't know what that was, but this was, oh, I wish I knew what year this was. Hmm, I don't know. I didn't write it. Well, that's too bad. This was, you know, just loose loose stuff in the beginning. This was, um, uh, was it the NPR? What's that NPR show called where they tell stories? Hmm, I can't think of it now, but this was a really great story with a lot of symbolism. There's a little cardinal up there. Great story about a, about, a, I don't even remember what now, but, um... Yeah, that was fun to do. I like doing story paintings like that. This goes, this was to uh, Mary Oliver's poem, The Donkey. Great poem, had fun painting that. Loved kind of illustrating that. Practicing some dandelions, some upside down daffodils. Whoops, oops, oops. This was really not planned, so I'm not set up well. Oh, this was a dream that I had. This is... Acrylics or gouache? Maybe it's gouache. And this was a dream that I had. The pile of shoes outside the door. Anyways. Oh, this was, I took a workshop on Hildegard von Bingen, on her music and her writings and her prophecy and Christian history. And um, this was sort of one of the paintings that came through while I was studying about her. Actually, both of these were. Whoops. Oh, this was a friend of mine posted this. And um, this was a lot of fun to do. She posted this photograph and I asked her if I could paint it. And she said yes. So that was a lot of fun. And then this bed, this interior, somebody else posted and I asked for permission. And they said yes. People usually do say yes. Another photograph. Some of these might have been through the Room Portrait Club. If you haven't heard of that, you should look that up on, if you like to paint interiors, look that up on Instagram. They do, like every week or every month maybe, they do a, a they all paint the same room. This is actually my living room. And most of these books have all been thrown out now as part of our remediation process, which is so sad. I love that painting. This was another person that I saw this, her uh, dining room on Instagram. And I actually changed quite a bit in this, but I asked her if I could paint it and she said yes. And then I don't think she liked it because I changed it so much. She didn't say she didn't like it, but she didn't say anything when I tagged her in it. Uh, just some loosey goosey stuff. Pastel. I haven't done pastel in a while. Partially because I just don't like the bother of it when it's um, in the sketchbook, even with fixative. Mm, two more pastel. Actually, each one of these, there's a video on my channel. I don't know if I'm going to remember to do all these links. I probably won't. But if you go to my playlists on my channel, you'll see there's a playlist for um, painting process, art journal and painting process or something like that. And it would be these, all of these paintings I did in videos and you would be able to see them there. I did this, I did a video on this one, which actually I don't think got that many views, which surprised me. I actually painted this on, I mean, I did all of these process. I painted them for you on video. This was with the Soho acrylics and a black Nero pencil. I loved doing this. I really enjoyed doing that. So I don't know if I just maybe didn't tag that video very well because when I first started making videos I didn't understand how to tag them. This was System 3 acrylics. If you remember Dela Rowney sent me some System 3s to try out and this was Utrecht. 
and I forget if I purchased those paints or if Utrex sent those to me. Oh, I think those were a gift from one of you guys. Yeah, I know Dela Rowney sent me the System 3, but I think one of you guys actually bought me a small set, and I think one of you guys actually bought me a set of the Utrecht too. And then there's all these pages left. So there's that much left of this journal with nice paper for acrylics and gouache. Um, yeah, that's maybe half done. So I got that one I can do, I can finish. This one is probably way too long to go through. I'm probably, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to use all this video, but this was a repurposed book on pyramids and I gessoed the pages and then I did paintings on them. All kinds of different mediums on these. System 3, uh, Snellier's little pouch paintings, I forget what they're called. Uh, this was, oh, that's what it was. Dale around me sent, sent me some of their fluid paints. Somebody bought me their regular System 3, a set. Uh, one of my YouTube viewers, thank you. Um, sorry, I forget who you were. It might have been Fran or Millie. I'm not sure. But um, then, then Dale Rowney sent me a set of their regular, their heavy body, and their fluid. And I think I did that with their fluid. And there's a video on this stuff somewhere on my channel. I'm not sure if it's a process video or not, but this was with the System 3 uh, fluid acrylics and gesso. This was palette cleanup, just scraping the palette, what was left on my palette. Another palette cleanup. This is some collage, I believe. Yeah, some collage and mixed media. This is, oh, this was a project for something. You had to paint a painting with a hole in it. The, there had to, the theme had to include there was a hole in it. So this was a hole in the universe of this person in the ocean with a sailboat. Another mixed media. More mixed media. I used to do a lot more of this intuitive art. No planning, just letting things come out. I've kind of gotten away from that as much. This was mixed media. And as part of our remediation, I had all these old books with these great images in them. And as part of our remediation process, I had to throw all those books away. That was really hard. These little characters were in one of those books and it was so sad to throw that away. More mixed media, hard times. Anyways, that's that repurposed book. And is that all? Oh, this is my class book. Whenever I take a workshop, I take visual notes and written notes. This was a Christine Lashley class. And oh, that was somebody on Instagram. I asked if I could, a, a Russian woman can't think of her name now, but I asked if I could draw that. I think this was from a Ben Hamburger class. This was just that sketch that I later painted. Oh, this was one day when my husband was in the hospital having some tests. I just did a watercolor of the outside of the hospital. Some swatching. This was from a class on no tans. Nicholas Wilton. Oh, this was his art to life, the free art to life thing that he does. This was some more Ben Hamburger notes. Ben Hamburger, I love the way he teaches. I just really, Lisa Daria Kennedy notes. And then that's it. But I really do like having a separate um, sketchbook where I keep notes from all of my different classes that I take. And then these two, I need to do a, a tour on because I just recently finished those. So, yikes, that's a lot. So, you gotta help hold me to it. I am on a sketchbook buying ban 
until I at least fill some of these. And what I'm thinking of doing is some of these smaller ones, like I was thinking of doing it maybe with this one, is just making it like a daily practice to do some really, really, really loose um, spontaneous painting in those each morning as a warm up. I thought that might be fun because I was never crazy about this size, this landscape one. And there again, I started out doing it with, you know, prettier paintings. So then I didn't want to mess it up with messy paintings because I started with pretty paintings. And I think you can really paralyze yourself with that. That was a no blame master study. Some landscape ones. I started to get a little looser. I think that was done in plein air by our garden. This was done in plein air by our garden. Oh, this was in plein air um, down by the Connecticut River. So that was another one down by the Connecticut River. So I started getting looser in this one. Want to use it up. Want to use this one up. This is also a Stillman and Burns. So I think what I may do is come into the studio in the morning and do warm-ups and just paint really loosely and fill up some of these sketchbooks so I can buy a new one. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's a disease, you know? I need a meeting. I need a sketchbook art supply meeting. Look at that, a clean desk with room to actually do things on. Wow, I impressed myself. Let's take a look at these gorgeous books. I'll put a link to these below the video. And I think they are on my Amazon favorites list. So that link is always below the video. So it's been a really hectic few days here the last few days. And um, we've had a back-to-back uh, -back winter storms. We've had daily power outages. And today, um, Don had to rush both of our dogs to the vet because they are sick. So um, we're praying that all is going to come out well with our fur babies. I didn't go because I had to finish up this video for you guys because I got to get it get it uploaded and tagged and all that good stuff. So I had promised you that we would take a look at these books and that's exactly what we're going to do to close this video out. So I guess I'll start with this freehand one. This is freehand sketching tips and tricks drawn from art by Helen Birch. I've got my smoothie here and I'm going to sit back, have my smoothie and flip through this book a little bit for you guys. Oh shoot, that's right. I was supposed to I think I forgot to mention this, um, and this was actually a while back. Uh, VidQ sent me an award for reaching 5,000 subscribers, and I think I'm actually kind of far over that right now, but thank you, thank you, thank you, subscribers. I looked at my analytics not that long ago and was disheartened to notice that 70% of my returning viewers, in other words, that's people who keep coming back and keep watching videos, are not subscribed. So that was a little shocking. So to those of you that do click like and comment on the videos and subscribe, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting my channel. And I really mean that sincerely. So woohoo, let's, let's hear it for those 5,000 people who are subscribed to my channel. You guys are awesome. So the thing that I really like about these books is um, it's really well indexed. So like, I don't know if you can see that, but it'll say like indexed by color. Oh, I forgot to turn my lights on. Hang on guys. Okay, hopefully that will, that will work better. You'll be able to see a little better. So the thing is this, I was saying this is really well indexed because um, it'll say like color and then give page numbers, shading, line, composition, tone, texture, on and on and on, colored ink, colored pencil, graphite pencil, observational, imaginative, narrative. I mean, this is, this is just awesome. 
principal element, medium, type of drawing, subject, and then she has indexed the images so that you could just sort of flip through this index and see what you want to look at, which, oh my gosh, there's so much inspiring work packed into these little books. And then the other thing I like is um, on each page, she tells a little bit about the artist's process. So the sketches section, we'll look at that. And then these two landscapes share a number of characteristics. Both are monochromatic, both are repeat patterns, and both are drawn using black pen and constructed digitally. The contrast between them lies in Molera's use of space. And then it just goes on to tell you about the artist and about, you know, their process and their, their thoughts and when they created this art. So really, really interesting to hear, you know, about the artist's process, to see all these different artists work. It's just really inspiring stuff. I mean, I love this mark making. It's just, look at that scribble. That is just crazy cool. I love it. So I'm not going to flip through the entire book, but maybe what I'll do is just flip through a few. I don't know actually if I'm allowed to flip through a whole book without the publisher's permission. So we'll just... We'll just show some random, oh, look, see, isn't that cool? Wow, love this stuff. And this is smartphone apps. So that is so cool. You could do that on your smartphone while you're sitting in the car waiting for your kids at an appointment or your grandkids or love that. Silhouettes. Yeah, I can't recommend these books enough. I will put links in the... Um, information below the video and thank you so much to miss d last week for letting me know that somehow all my links and information um, under my video got deleted because i had put it all there i had painstakingly taken about an hour to build all the affiliate links and put them under the video and then miss d notified me oh i guess it was a few hours after the video was posted nobody said anything so maybe nobody had checked the affiliate links but um miss d did notice and she alerted me and i went back in and frantically had to rebuild the description of the video the affiliate links and all the information there's a lot of information below all of my videos so thank you thank you miss d for for doing that because apparently people were looking for items because they did use my um some of my blick affiliate links and some of my amazon affiliate links so that is the freehand book. Wow. Love, love, love that. And then this is the Just Add Watercolor book. And there again, it's indexed with these images that have the page number. Look at that one. Oh my gosh, I love that. So, so inspiring. Just makes your heart happy sitting and looking at all these images. Amazing illustrations. Love the dog, this dog. That's so cute. And again, um, it gives a little bit of information about like this this one it's it says so it'll have a tip on the bottom of each one there'll be a tip some information about the process and then a tip so like this one says three bathers was produced using one color blue and one technique wet on wet a process that involves layering paint of varying tones this process can be demanding 
and the lack of pencil guidelines suggest that the artist spent quite a lot of time preparing and practicing the brush strokes before beginning the piece. The artist occasionally switched to wet on dry, as is evident with the central bather. She, used, she is less diffuse than the others, which suggests that the paper was allowed to dry before she was painted, resulting in more sharply defined facial features. A watercolor paper with a minimum weight of 300 GSM or 200 pounds is preferable for wet on wet painting. The paper must be able to withstand the application of water without curling, buckling, or distorting too much. Here, hot pressed paper was chosen because of the smooth and even surface. And then the tip is, it is useful to have a cool blue, one with green bias in a basic watercolor palette. The cool blue used in this example is Prussian blue, although they, there are other options, including phthalo blue, cerulean blue, and Windsor blue. And I just heard my hubby come home, so I need to go see how the dogs are, and I will be back in a second. All right, the boys are back from the vet. Look how swollen his little face is. You can see that side, and then he's so swollen. They gave him antibiotics. They're not sure what's going on. So they said it could be a tooth. She didn't think it looked like a tooth, but she said to give the antibiotics and if it uh, the swelling goes down and then comes back, he'll have to have a tooth extracted. Poor boy. Toshi, look at your little face. Oh, poor little boy. And take him over and put him in his little bed. And his brother Nico is downstairs, and they put him back on antibiotics too. And they're not sure if um, it's a gut infection. He has had Giardia before, so I don't know. Um, the poor boy. We tried. They gave him special food, and we tried to feed him the food, but. Um, he just can't eat. He wants to eat really bad. He's hungry. He picks up the, it's a, it's a canned food. So he picks up the meat and he puts it in his mouth and then he spits it out and he actually turns his head away. His gut is so upset. So my poor boy. Anyways, hopefully both boys will be mended soon and all will be well. This, I really loved the description that she gives with this, the artist's, um, you know, ideas behind this creation, because it's not anything that I would have picked up on just looking at the artwork myself. And I'll read to you a little bit about what, what she says. High key colors. In this piece, their ancestors were wolves. A domesticated dog looks at us from behind an orange mask. The whites of the dog's eyes set within this darker tone help to focus our attention. This painting is a good example of an opaque watercolor. The orange wolf painted in what is called a high key color remains bright, showing up clearly on the brown recycled paper. A transparent watercolor would not be as effective on this paper. A characteristic of opaque colors is that they dry with a matte surface, much like gouache paint does. Pencil, which is used for the dog, works well on top of this matte surface. Every watercolor has specific characteristics. In order to work effectively with them, it is important to know the characteristics of each pigment. As you experiment with your paints, you'll find out what these are. Here, the artist has exploited that knowledge to, to great effect. And then the tip that they have below is... Using white on colored background can be very effective. The chalkiness of the white gouache paints and the white pencil ensures they stand out against the darker tones. This makes them particularly useful for adding highlights to a work. So I love that about it being the domesticated dog looking out through his ancestor wolf mask. I think that's ingenious. I just absolutely love this piece. So, yeah, this um this book again is just stunning 
full of inspiration. These little paragraphs, you know, I know a, a lot of artists that I know um, buy art books and they, they just flip through and look at the il illustrations. And I certainly can understand wanting to do that with this book. I really recommend reading these little blips. There's a lot of information in those little blips that is just so useful and, and um, enlightening. So much. Oh, I love that whale one. Look at that illustration. My lights are making it reflective. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Love this. Boy, I might, I might do something inspired by this kind of style. Very muted interior. I love these little figures. Very cool. Wow. Wow, yeah, I actually am getting an idea for something I'd like to do for this. I'm actually picturing a, a really sort of muted maybe snow scene, an exterior snow scene, um, and these little girls dressed in red jackets standing out really brightly against very grayed atmospheric scene. Oh, see, it's just so inspiring. Beautiful. Anyways, I shouldn't flip through every page, I don't think, because first of all, that would take away the surprise for you. Look, 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 how gorgeous. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Applying color theory. Uh, and you know, the other thing about these little tips and these little tidbits of information she gives you, if you're dyslexic or you have an autoimmune disease that causes, uh, that was snow crashing off the roof, by the way, that causes neurological issues with brain inflammation where you have struggle with reading at times. I know how, how, how hard it can be to struggle through periods where you are experiencing brain inflammation. And I've gone through periods where I've had to read the same sentence like 10 times and I just can't get comprehension during those times. This is such a short little thing to read and they're packed with juicy tidbits. So that's another really great reason to um, make the effort to read the little paragraphs. Yeah. Oh, you know, I can't recommend these books enough. Really can't. This is just so precious. I'm doing that. I think the video will already be up or is already yeah, the video is already up where I'm doing the Mugshot Monday art challenge and we're doing Nancy Gardner's really whimsical ceramics. And this painting kind of reminds me of her whimsical ceramics. It'd be fun. Let my last submission for this week, for this month, past Monday. Now, I don't think that would be in the last video, but that it was a watercolor. And um, I love the idea of doing this bright fun watercolor of some of Nancy Gardner's ceramics. Anyways, so that's the watercolor version. I love everything about these books. I don't like this binding. I forget what it's called. Flex, is it called a flex binding? It's not the same as a regular um, soft cover. It's very tight. The, the covers are very tightly bound. So if you open them too much, you're going to they're, they're just not going to close again. They're going to, yeah, I, I don't like this binding. I don't know what the purpose is of this kind of binding. It's wrapped. Remember how you used to wrap your school books? Well, that's what this, this is. And it's a very tight kind of binding. I just doesn't feel comfortable to really lay the book open. Um, so that's the only, only complaint actually I would offer about these books. Everything else, the color is beautiful. The plates are gorgeous. Who's this artist? Nicholas Stevenson. This is Nicholas Stevenson. This almost reminds me of a cross between Emma Carlyle's work and Sandy Hester's work. Really adorable. Anyways, okay, so that's the books, you guys. Freehand sketching tips and tricks drawn from art and just add watercolor both by Helen Birch and these will be linked below my video and I think that's it for this week's video um it should be another full one another long one 
And I have another long one for you guys next week too, where I actually, I've already started working on it and it is doing some loose landscape paintings, some really fast and loose landscape paintings. If you remember at the beginning of the video, uh, when I started filming this video, I was talking about using up some of my sketchbooks and this was one of them. And I talked about doing some loose landscapes and I do just that. And I actually do two of them. Um, I actually filmed doing two of them for you. So you will see those paintings being painted along with a couple of others that I show in my efforts to use this little sketchbook up. So that's going to be fun. That'll be in next week's video. Okay, guys, God bless. And I hope you have a great creative week. And remember, just paint, show up and paint. That's all. Doesn't have to be good. Doesn't have to be, you know, the only thing, the only requirement is that it be fun, that you allow yourself to enjoy it. If you're not enjoying it, then for the purposes of healing with art and um, just sort of using art as an expressive creative practice, you might want to reevaluate what you're doing because you really should be having fun and relaxing and just enjoying your creative time. All right, guys, God bless. I'll see you next week. Take care. Mm -hmm.